these are natural hazards uh, related to drought, uh, water stress, drought prone areas, there is meteorological drought and there is hydrological drought. If you want to know the difference, meteorological drought happens when um, there is no rain in your place, right? Like so, let us say for example, in Mumbai, if there is less amount of rainfall, it is meteorological drought. But if there is no rainfall in the places that supply water to Mumbai, that means you are part of a larger watershed, right? Like so, you are dependent on a lot of these things. So, that is hydrological uh, drought. Then there is agricultural drought and so many other things. But water stress, uh, river and flood risk, uh, rainfall risk, etc., etc., all these natural hazards that you might know the news for. We started mapping it out uh, quite a lot. Now, you might ask the question like, hey, you have a brilliant map, then is everything known then? No, not really. Thing is, at an India level, I can say that this is uh, this is how things are. You know, uh, West Bengal has more rain than Rajasthan. These kind of things are easy. But the problem is, when you are doing policies, you need more granular data, more nuanced information, so that you can come up with any decision. Let's say, for example, but there is heat risk. There should be heat risk as well. Heat is not uniformly affecting everyone. Not just because of your lifestyles but also because of the place that you live. You have an amazing campus here in IIT Bombay. Uh, one of our first social media posts related to heat was on Dharavi, like how Dharavi is more exposed to uh, higher temperatures when compared with a more greener uh, location. So those kind of smaller nuances are required uh, with respect to heat, flood, etc., etc. So that, uh, why do we require that uh, is that, see, you are a government, let's say you are a government official, you are not going to have funds for everything. Now, uh, Mumbai's municipal budget, what, 80,000, 60,000 crores? 60,000 crores. Um, now, I, I was working in Bodo land. Uh, this was a meeting that we had five months ago. The municipal budget was uh, 65,000 rupees. 65,000 rupees. So, uh, they are dependent on, they have, someone else has to fund them so that they can work. So, which means that you have to prioritize interventions. Interventions cannot be, like you, you might have the best of the solutions, but it has to be prioritized. It has to have, you know, first two years you do this, second two years you do this. And for that, what should be the first thing that you have to do? Which are the areas that you have to focus? So, you need prioritization. So, maps help a lot with that prioritization. This map over here, uh, orange is actually the older line and pink is actually the uh, newer coastline for Mumbai. This is satellite based information. Um, so we studied, uh, um, you know, multiple satellite images and we came up, uh, came up with that. How many of you have read uh, the Mumbai Climate Action Plan? There are two parts in it. One is the Climate Action Plan and then there is a Vulnerability Assessment. So you might find uh, one map missing in uh, the vulnerability assessment, which is on uh, projected sea level rise. Everyone in the mainstream actually works on uh, something called as uh, bucket analysis, you can say, okay, or uh, bathtub anal analytics, as you call it. What it means is that long term sea level rise, everyone imagines that it is just like a bathtub, you pour extra water on it, it rises. But unfortunately, that is not how sea works. Um, so, during storm water surge, when the event is very rapid, it works in that way. So, if a cyclone is coming and the sea level is rising, it exactly works in that way. But in long term, what happens is that there is something called as longshore drift. So, sediment transportation. Because of sediment transportation, the areas that you might, I mean over 100 years, the areas you might think as topographically higher right now, might not be necessarily the safer place at that point. And the areas which are lower right now might not, might not be dangerous as we think about it. So, now we can do that modeling. Unfortunately, there is no data on sediment transport in India. We do not know how much uh, exactly is the amount of uh, uh, soil that has been brought by the rivers. So, you have rivers over here, the Ullas river and every, every other stream in Mumbai is transporting water into it. Uh, there is this natural erosion, there is this artificial erosion, there is uh, uh, sewage which brings a lot of silt into the sea 
and because of and there are so many other smaller actions and because of that we do not know that and there is no estimate for it and i said i cannot do it without that data and nobody was ready to provide that data this is one problem that you can always work on how to do this etc uh, because without that data i couldn't provide the map and i didn't want to use that bathtub analysis because it will give wrong prioritization so people who might actually require might lose the funding support and people who might not require might get something and this is very and because of the doubt around it there are so many questions around it i thought i'll say no to it we can i told them like you know once the data becomes available we can ask someone to do it i can share the methodologies on how to do it etc etc but we need data for it and unfortunately because of the you know setup and everything we don't you know nobody has worked on this data yet so that's why the document doesn't contain future sea level rise maps so but historical maps we had satellite images and we did now i'll give you an example over here i said the orange line is the older one and the pink line is the newer one you can notice that the thane creek this is the thane creek towards navi mumbai this is navi mumbai this is main part of mumbai and uh, this is what's happening the shriek, uh, the creek is actually shrinking so by traditional thought a sea level rise should have you know basically sunk that places right how is then the land becoming more and more this is exactly the problem that we have with sediment transport and longshore drift and everything and soon this will become much much more narrow over the years and thane creek will you know if this pattern continues thane creek might might look like more like a river in uh, you know few years so that's how that's where it's heading so you can see how much uh, distance it is and uh, near the juhu beach this area there is however erosion now on the sea side facing section there is erosion on this place there is you know accretion now, there is a big process attached to it i don't want to go into the process but i'll tell you that there is no data for this i mean data to study it better so how do you monitor how much sand is going to come into your sea these are problem statements you can always work on this is a gap that i have so this is one example another is this uh, i just mentioned about uh, storm time sea level rises so this is actually uh, if you have heard of cyclones uh, taukte and kyar uh, you know at that time uh, sea level actually rose uh, uh, by this much amount this is 1 meter extra now you have high tide and on top of it because the cyclone is coming up 1 meter is coming up right like so now this is actually from uh, uh, port port data now the problem is that uh, if you had seen that topography map of mumbai the ports are there is one port over here and there is one port over here so these are your measuring stations which are shielded inside the uh, you know creek so where are the stations across uh, outside this it's not there we cannot study it properly long term okay fine but at least right now whether we can monitor we don't have the means to monitor now this is mumbai where you have good amount of data imagine other districts of the country where you don't have this information so only to certain extent we are able to study um this is actually i just added like what will the cyclone look like if it passes through this is uh, amphan i think yeah cyclone amphan as it passed through kolkata and this is night light satellite image which is commonly used for studying economy um uh this this is the area affected right like so this is uh, this is something that i produce whenever cyclones come up because you will know which areas to prioritize very quickly uh, areas that are not having electricity and these are the areas that you have to provide electricity right now now heat is a very complex one as much as everyone thinks that it is simple actually every time it becomes more complex as i think about it now typically we measure heat by temperature and uh, everything of that sort one conversation actually I, we succeeded is that um, i converted that uh, conversation from temperature to something called as heat stress now what is the difference is that uh, you know temperature is the actual measurement right like the mercury rises and everything 
Heat stress is a combination of, uh, I mean, how much you feel discomfort about it. See, my place, Nagarkoil, is, uh, you know, year around it has 32 degrees. It never, I have never seen it cross 38 itself. 38 itself, I don't uh, recall it going to. But if you are coming from somewhere else, and if you go to Nagarkoil, you will feel it as extremely hot. Because it's not exactly hot, it's humid. So, that, so the thing is that regarding heat, the problems that you face heat is not just about temperature, but as well as humidity, wind speed and everything associated with it. So this map actually, there is one map on uh, uh, temperatures. This is actually high temperature, but this is on thermal stress. Now you can notice that parts of Kerala, this is Kanyakumari actually, here it is yellow, that is less temperature. But in this map, you can notice that the heat stress is still higher. So now it's great. Uh, looks like I have done it, but I we don't have enough weather stations to measure it. So this is all satellite estimated numbers and everything. But like I said, when you are working closely, you have to know which are the areas of heat stress. We are trying to work on a methodology to have a more granular measurement of it. You don't have enough number of weather stations in the country. I don't know how many of you have read the news about uh, Delhi 52.9 degrees Celsius. The information is wrong. Uh, the problem is that uh, weather sensors have to be calibrated properly. And uh, year by year we talk about, I mean, I'm part of this uh, weather blogger community as well. We discuss a lot around uh, which sensors are mal malfunctioning, which are not, uh, which are, which are malfunctioning, which are not malfunctioning. We have this discussion year on year on year, every, everywhere. But uh, calibration is a big issue. I mean, first is you don't have the device. Second is that you don't have properly functioning device. And because of which that Mungeshpur data from Delhi, 52.9, the moment it came out, uh, figured out that it was faulty data. I remember tweeting it. And later that day, IMD said that, you know, it's under scrutiny. Uh, so it's a, it was actually a problematic data because when it reaches around 50, it starts to give problems a little bit more. So who calibrates it, how to calibrate it? This is an actual existing problem. Now this is okayish with uh, temperature. It becomes a huge headache with rainfall. And uh, because at least in temperatures, I know that certainly for 50, 60 degrees might not go into my place, right? Like so actually Nagarkoil weather station, there's a weather station somewhat uh, 10 kilometers from Nagarkoil. It used to show minus 41 degrees. It's like, uh, Fine, <laughs> we used to live with it. But the thing is that I know that it is a error without even have to, I don't even have to argue with it. Uh, but in case of rain, it becomes a huge problem because you are not sure about it. Whether I got uh, 10 uh, millimeters or whether I got 20 millimeters, etc. This kind of a problem exists. I remember once uh, there is a place in South Tamil Nadu called Trichandur. There was one uh, weather station where it was uh, not working. And uh, this was two years ago, I think. One of the bloggers uh, went immediately over there and found that the that is a manual rain gauge. So you have to replace the water in it. You have to remove the water and you have to keep it. They hadn't removed it. The previous numbers, uh, because the thing was that the lady who was in charge, uh, she was an officer. She, uh, when called, she said, you know, uh, uh, it was raining a lot. Her husband was not there. So she couldn't go to the place. So she gave some numbers. So that's it. So how do we overcome this data deficiency uh, thing in with weather data? I was just mentioning professor today morning about a old work that we did with the groundwater. There's this gravity anomaly that I wanted to study with respect to the satellite based gravity anomaly with respect to groundwater data. There was this beautiful fluctuation of uh, one uh, groundwater station from Haryana. You know, monsoon it rises, the water level rises and then it falls a perfect uh, sinusoidal curve every, it was beautiful. And when we visited, they said, uh, you know, six years, the well was not there. Uh, so someone has been filling data without going into the ground. Uh, it doesn't mean that the automatic ones are any better. Uh, without naming the institution, I'll say that there was a water quality data. And I do not know what to do with it because I couldn't find anything in it. It was like random noise what I got. So how do you overcome these uh, things? It's a legit problem that exists. And because of that, so many decisions we are not able to take. 
and as an organization i don't have the funding also so if you if you are figuring out some device based solutions this is one area that you can work on this mumbai climate action plan again has a map on extreme rainfall numbers in that we vetted out uh, a little bit of uh, numbers out so i don't remember how many gajas we re removed because the numbers were looking unrealistic uh, and uh, some of the rain gajas it we still put it because we do not know whether it is right or wrong so we had to keep it because it is the actual data but only in cases where we know it is okay -ish. but uh, it is very difficult the best way to do uh, you know go about it is actually if you have good amount of information we are able to vet it but uh, when we have only one or two weather stations in a city we do not know what to uh, you know check it with uh, so bengaluru for example has six weather stations by the local authority i mean the ks and dmc there is a karnataka state uh, authority and uh, there is this uh, imd has uh, two stations within the city and one slightly outside for example this is a map of kochi actually uh, left side vegetation center is surface temperature and right side is uh, access to open space this is how i work satellite estimated vegetation right like so that is one this temperature is surface temperature now, uh, i wanted air temperature and heat stress one alternative is to go through sat i mean using satellite images we can calculate surface temperature surface temperature is good to some extent but to calculate heat stress it's not sufficient but anyways you can find the hot spots within the city to some extent so this you can find i think we added it in mumbai climate action plan also because uh, i think we developed this uh, methodology to calculate it in 2015 i think a bit and now i have the areas where open spaces open spaces means parks and playgrounds and how much are accessible to them right like so the areas in green are people who are able to access parks so this is all gis right like so i know the location of the parks i know the pathways around it so now i am just modeling on how to you know the, you know people who can access it within 10 minutes and uh, based on that these are the people who are ac having access to parks this is the rest of the vegetation and now i have heat map now i can imagine the solutions right like so vegetation related solutions where to prioritize which wards to prioritize so and which type of land use to prioritize so for example areas which are you know low income areas have a different setup but commercial areas are pretty much hot you can notice it when you are going to any big malls it's all completely concretized so the more reflection you have and everything around that industrial areas as well so uh, this is one specific use case that we did in uh, uh, this uh, link road between uh, uh, gadkopar and anderi so this is hot spot in you know which are the hottest spots in that road uh, our transport team is actually working on how to make the roads much better uh, with respect to greenery and everything so you can't just say like you know across this entire region just go and plan because the number of saplings amount of resources everything will be limited so we began giving nuanced information what did i do i had the surface temperature information i had the road network uh, from open spot so this is what we included lens in the climate action plan uh, temperature wards that you have to focus so you can see that the more the vegetation the lesser the surface temperature the higher the temperature the lesser the vegetation this kind of relationships so now if you want to prioritize 5 6 wards for action in this year these are your 5 6 wards that you have to focus on now the next is tree now i have vegetation maps through satellite images which tells you how green they are and everything but the problem is for carbon sequestration and everything around that we need to know which trees and how many trees are there etc etc now this was done manually by the way i i sat and digitized this i saw high resolution google earth images sat and i clicked on everything and created a point so not the best way to go about it but luckily i mean i chose it in that way east delhi is one of the poorest when it comes to vegetation many parts of delhi if you look at it it doesn't have that much vegetation um only this uh, new delhi region right like so south part Uh, what you many many of us call it as lutians delhi right so that has a lot of greenery but many other parts where actually majority of the people live there is no vegetation you can find concrete jungles so one tree every 122 people you can imagine how how poor it is there will be one ward which is one one tree for 400 people or something yeah 
Every city across globally they have tree counts. Indian cities do not have. It is actually very much required. So, Pune has to some extent, but other cities mostly do not have. Delhi does not have, Mumbai does not have. Mumbai is actually working on some methods, models and stuff. Uh, Mustafabad, you can see one for uh, one tree for 408 zone people. Tree count uh, for certain, I mean, interventions will be much more required in a corporation area. A municipal corporation of, of the size of Mumbai is uh, 450 square kilometers. Uh, Chen, I mean, uh, uh, Bangalore corporation is somewhere around 720. Um, so, I mean, these kind of square kilometers, I mean, if you are looking at a smaller city or a medium range city, then it is 50, 50 square kilometers or something like that. But it is much, uh, much more nuanced than the satellite information. And the other is, uh, uh, I mean, see, nobody has the, uh, I mean, at least in satellites, the uh, thing is that we know uh, how to process it in a governmental institution to some extent. Drone images, uh, storing the drone images itself, they won't have the space in their computers. So that is a problem. I mean, that's that's where the you know your solutions would come out much better.